Now that you have installed Jamovi, let's play with some data. Now is the good time to download the Excel file named Height from GCU Learn. As the file name suggests, um, the rows of data are heights of a group, a group of people measured in centimeters, arranged by sex, where one represents female and two represents male. In fact, you can directly open the file from Jamovi instead of copy and paste uh, the data and import the column headings automatically too. So now let's open the Excel file from Jamovi. So here is our Jamovi and let's just go to data. Oh, sorry. And just uh, click on these uh, three bars on the left and click open and this PC so you actually have to find the file where you saved it so for me it's right here Uh, there we go. See, um, if we just copy and paste this data, then we actually have to name the variable manually. But if we use just um, you know column headings of the Excel file, then the column headings are directly imported to the corresponding column, uh, which is quite um, convenient. And even the sex and even the levels of measurements are assigned properly. So height um, is a, a ratio level of measurement. So this is continuous, all right. And the sex is actually nominal. So um, as I said, one was female. So we're going to just name. And then two was male. So we label them, uh, label the data. So what that means is that the first uh, 50, right, data set are female data. And then the remaining 50 belongs to, um, you know, male, basically. Right. So given the data, let's um, calculate some descriptive statistics. So height, so let's just uh, click on exploration and descriptives. So um, let's just uh, take a look at the statistics. Right, so these tick marks are basically the default output Jamovi will generate for you. Um, but if you look at the sample size, so N is basically the sample size. And sometimes you have missing data, but we don't. So we're going to just untick this. And central tendency. So we have mean, median, mode, or sum. But um, you know, people typically don't use sum. So let's just uh, tick mode um, to see what mode is, along with mean and median. And percentile values. Um, so if we um, have this uh, box ticked, then it'll give us uh, cut points for four equal groups. So which are basically the quartiles, right? So it's going to give us three um, quartiles, uh, three three uh, numbers to split the height data into four equal groups, which is the definition of the quartiles. Um, you can also do some percentiles, but you know, 25th, 50th, and 75th is basically um, the three numbers divide the data set into four equal groups. So it is basically the same thing. So we don't have to do this. Standard deviation, minimum, maximum, um, so uh, range is basically the difference between the maximum and minimum. IQR, this is interquartile range. So if we know these three cut points, 
then if we know the quartiles then we can calculate the iqr and by definition iqr is the difference between q3 and q1 um, which by definition contains 50 percent of the data um what else plots let's see um the histogram density box plot and sometimes people um indicate you know where the mean is on the box plot uh, along with the median so let's just tick the mean and let's plot data on top of box plot too and you can do that mm, normality so shapiro work is a statistical test to so this is a diagnostic test to see if a data set is more or less normally distributed or not and we're going to have you know more chance to talk about this and distribution skewness um you know it's about symmetry and kurtosis this is about tailedness of distribution so this all has to do with the normality of a distribution or the data set um but so people used to look at these um two uh, quantities to see if a data set uh, is normally distributed or not but these days people use a statistical test to see if a data set is normally distributed or not or sometimes they can use qq plot so this is a, a quantile quantile plot where you can plot your data along with a kind of ideal normal distribution uh, so that you know uh, to see if your data matches the quantiles of ideal standardized normal distribution to see if your data set is normally distributed and again uh, we're going to have a um, you know, chance to talk about this in more detail later on so uh, for now uh, we're going to just untick it and let's see what it looks like so we want to have the um, statistics descriptive stats all these statistics for height only so to calculate the um, descriptive statistics you have to move that variable into the variables pane right so here we have our descriptive statistics so the size of the sample is 100 the mean height is 174.35 centimeters median is quite close um 173.94 mode is 150.03 um which is quite different and the standard deviation is 9.4198 which is basically the average spread you have in the data iqr this is an interquartile range it's a 12.189 and if we look at those um cut points three cut points the 25th percentile is 168.55 and the 75th percentile is 180.74 so if we take the difference between these two right 25th percentile and 75th percentile then we should get this value this iqr 12.189 and the range is 49.213 and that is basically the difference between the minimum and maximum and 50th percentile it should be the same as the median right so 50th, 50th percentile is by definition median and we can see that they actually match each other and down here we have a histogram so on the x-axis we have height and we have um you know about bars right and this curve is what is called a density curve so that is actually kind of a best fitting on this distribution on the histogram right and if we can if you, if you look at the curve then it is more or less symmetric around the center and looks like the high data are normally distributed okay? 
and down below we have um, a box plot right so the box the length of the box represents the iqr right and by definition we contain uh, this box contains 50 percent of the data right the top hinge is the 75th percentile and the lower hinge of the box uh, is um the 25th percentile and this band in the middle of the box represents so that is the location of the median and this small square in the middle is the location of the mean um, you can see the mean because we request it uh, to show on the box plot and the y-axis represents the height and you know there's two lines uh, coming out of the box is called whisker and the length of the whisker is determined by um, two equations so the upper whisker is basically q3 plus 1.5 times uh, the iqr whereas uh, the lower whisker is q1 minus 1.5 times the iqr and then whatever data that is outside of this uh, whisker length uh, is flagged as an outlier so uh, i'm going to just uh, turn off the data uh, for right now and as you can see there are actually two outliers flagged by this box plot and if it just turn on the data again as a jittered fashion then you can see that all of the data basically sprinkled over on the box plot um, in fact the uh, horizontal locations uh, you know doesn't uh, that don't really mean anything uh, it is just a random jitter to uh, improve the visualization of the location of the data so what actually matters is only the y location right y location of each data so and um, this one this one was an outlier and that is close to two meters right and then this one is almost like uh, 150 so um this is the visualization of the box plot it can get quite complicated um on top of the, you know those five numbers um you can have um different uh, visualization and so this is jittered and if you stacked then it'll actually group the data into a smaller bins like in histogram and they just align the data that fall into that um, category like this so um, in this case the location of the y doesn't um, that's not really real location of each individual data it is only the jittered that is showing you the actual locations of data and if you take the violin then it'll basically show the symmetrical density curve um, on both sides so it looks like a violin so that's why it is called the violin plot but the curve the lines is actually this density curve basically right it is just a turned around uh, 90 degree uh, clockwise and anti-clockwise and they're just put together to show the overall distribution of the data on top of the box plot um, bar plot it is really um, not the bar plot to show the um, the frequency information it is um, the bar with an error bar here right so the side the height of the bar is actually the mean of the data and then there's a quite small error bar um, i don't know what that is it may be standard error of the mean uh, given so small size um but basically the uh, height of the data i, I mean see that um, is actually used as a label but this should go to the y-axis right um the mean is 174.35 so that should be 
um, the location of the mean and you know there's a small error bar here it was just not really uh, meaningful in this case all right so this is all about um, the descriptive statistics you can generate um, so uh, you can just report um, basically at least one central tendency measure and one dispersion measure right if you choose to report the mean then you have to report standard deviation or variance on the other hand if you choose to report the median as the central tendency then you should report iqr as your dispersion statistics you cannot um, pair up median with standard deviation because standard deviation is calculated based on the mean so it is average spread of the data from the mean so that's the standard deviation so do not pair this with median okay it always goes with the mean um, and the standard deviation median iqr okay so that was how to calculate the descriptive statistics and explore the data so we only talk about the height data but um, now i want you to generate the uh, descriptive statistics for the uh, sex variable um, using Jamovi. Now, um, I'd like to show you how to calculate the Z-score, the standardized score, using Jamovi this time. So let's go back to the data. See, this is a raw score, and this is distribution of height. So this is histogram of height. And now let's uh, convert this score into the Z-score the standardized score so um to do so um there is no automatic function uh, for the jamovi to automatically convert these scores into um, the z score but with a simple operation uh, what it's called compute we can um, calculate the z score of all this hundred score in a single um, step. So once we cl cl uh, click this compute, then it'll create a new variable called compute, a computed variable. And we're going to name this as a Z height because this is going to be the standard score of the height. And if you remember from the last semester, how do we calculate the Z score, right? And um, the Z score equals x which is the original score minus the mean of the data set mu and this difference between each datum and the mean is divided by the sigma the standard deviation of the data set right so if, let's just click this a formula editor if you click on it so from this, right, uh, we see the variables we have in the data set. And on the left, we have different functions you can use. So for the mathematical functions, uh, ABS for absolute value, exponentiation, natural log, and so on. And there's a statistical functions too. Um, absolute IQR, absolute set. Oh, right, so I think, oh, in fact, well, there's a set. Oh, okay. So uh, we don't even have to remember the equation, uh, but let's just see how it works. And then because we want to convert this height score to Z score, so just move the uh, variable by double clicking it inside the uh, bracket and see what happens. Ah, right. Oh, I didn't know that. Right, so that is the one way to calculate the Z-score, right? So um, these are the Z-score, uh, the corresponding Z-score for each height data. So um, this 168.709 is 
is actually corresponding to the z-score of a negative 0.599, which means is that this score is below the mean with the standard deviation of um, 0.599, so about like um, 0.6 um, standard deviation below the mean. That's what it means. So if it is close to um, so for this, uh, this one, right? So this one is like 183.810. And it is actually one standard deviation above the mean. So the mean is this, right? So 147.35. So that's the mean. And so one standard deviation above that mean, that's this score is. That's what it means. So this was interesting because I didn't know that I can calculate the z-score using the z-function. But uh, we can do by using um, the z-equation we learned. So now z-height 2 and we can use so uh, the equation z equals x minus mu divided by sigma, right? So x here is the height. That's what we want to convert uh, to z score and minus. We know the mean here, down here, uh, 174.35. And you have to close this uh, numerator with bracket and four slash for division and you divide this by standard deviation which is this 9.0 right so this way we can convert all the scores into the z score and voila we have exactly the same result right um, but now that we know that there, uh, we do have the z function you can actually use this function to um, calculate the z-score and so this is how you calculate the z-score and now that we have this let's plot the histogram of the z-score and in fact let's just move this no missing yeah, mean median um, mode standard deviation no minimum maximum histogram density so that is a um, histogram of the standardized score the, the overall shape should be exactly the same even though somehow the bars are missing somewhere here um, which is kind of strange but it should be exactly the same as this the overall shape is and as you can see the number of sample is 100 should be the same and mean is um, you know negative this number 10 to so this uh, e stands for the um the power of 10 power of 10 uh, so this is scientific notation so this is a 10 to the negative 16 so which is very very small close to zero right in fact if you convert any score into the z score then mean becomes zero and um, it is just a you know rounding error but the mean is close to zero and median is 0.04 um, the mode is a little um, off so when all these numbers are the same then we have perfect normal distribution but it doesn't look like um, it is perfect normal distribution but it looks normal enough so i think it's a forgivable and look at the standard deviation see if I don't know if you still remember it, but if you convert any score, any raw score into the z-score, then it um, maintains the shape of the distribution uh, 
with the mean becomes zero and the standard deviation becomes one. And this is what it shows. Right? And so um, from the box plot previously, where did it go? Right here. Um, that's, oh no, box plot. Let's just um, clear everything and just leave the original box plot with me. And we had this outliers, right? And we want to see um, how far away these scores are from the mean in terms of the Z score, in terms of standard deviation. So to find out, you know, the funny thing about, by the way, uh, about the gem movies that they still didn't uh, include the sort function. So you cannot really sort this column in either sending or descending order, which is quite annoying. But, um, you know, thankfully, we only have a single outliers on either side, right? So that is that should be maximum. And then this should be the minimum. So we can is easily find out what they are. So in descriptives, so what we need is just minimum and maximum. Oh, maybe we did this before. Yeah, we did. We did. Okay, there we go. So the minimum is negative 2.582 in, in terms of a z-score. And maximum is 2.6425. So both scores are actually more than 2.5 standard deviation away from the mean. So the negative is below the you know, mean and then positive means above the mean right and typically um, the outliers are defined as uh, the z score greater than uh, or less than 2.5 z score right in either direction and um, so this these two scores are actually fit um, to that definition and what was in Right, so the minimum height was actually 150, and the maximum height was 199. So um, this way, we can uh, just to show you how to calculate the Z score uh, from the raw score.